Do something here. Twenty twelve is our present year, seventy AD, and you subtract that from there, give you one thousand nine hundred and forty two years. One thousand nine hundred and forty two years ago, we were removed from our homeland for the last time and we haven't been back since. But we have only been here for 300 and something years. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So what happened to us for about 1,500 years before we got here? We were kings, we had a homeland, we were doing good. But now after Titus sacked Jerusalem in 70 AD, history tells us that we were scattered throughout the nations in lowliness and obscurity. And there was something else that happened in the year of 70 AD other than Titus sacking Jerusalem. And we're going to go into World Scope Encyclopedia and find out what happened in the year of 70 AD. World Scope Encyclopedia, and this is uh, about Edom, because we got to look at our brother now. Because like I told you, beyond our history here in America, when they try to go back, they give us Ham's history. But now, Edom is getting ready to come in the picture. And he is getting ready to take over the glory that we had with the Lord before we come here. Read World Scope Encyclopedia. Edom, meaning red, the name given to Esau on account of the red pottage secured by him from his brother Jacob. The name was also given to the country settled by Esau, having been previously known as Mount Seir. During the reigns of David and Solomon, Edom was under subjection to the Israelites. Later, the Edomites ravaged the southern borders of Palestine and were denounced with considerable vehemence by some of the prophets of Israel. After the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D., the name of Edom, or Idumea, disappeared from geography. Now look at this here. In 70 AD, Titus the Roman sacks Jerusalem, take us into captivity, and our brother, all of a sudden, he disappeared. He disappeared from geography. Hmm. His name is Esau, not Houdini, is it? Let's go into another history book, The Last Two Million Years, and we're going to read on page 87 and see what this history book has to tell us. Go ahead on and read. Faith survives the dispersion? Yes. The crucifixion of Jesus about A.D. 30 did not end Jewish resistance to the Roman occupation. In 70, when the country was again in a state of revolt, Jerusalem, the holy city, became the core of the resistance to the Romans. Titus, the son of Emperor Vespasian, proceeded to lay siege to Jerusalem. The city fell and the inhabitants were enslaved in their thousands and dispersed throughout the Mediterranean world. Now, this is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that we are reading about because the Assyrians in 722 took the nine tribes out and they became the lost tribes of Israel, never to return. Those nine tribes was not even around when Jesus was here. They don't even know nothing about the Lord. The only part of our family that know Jesus was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Now, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they get dispersed in 70 AD by Titus into the Mediterranean world. The Mediterranean world, people, is our Western Hemisphere, Europe and America. That's why we in this Western Hemisphere is either Judah, Benjamin and Levi, because the other nine tribes is lost. Okay? Now, in 70 AD, not only did Titus destroy Jerusalem, but our brother disappeared. How do a whole nation of people just disappear? We getting ready to show you how they disappeared. Let's go into Psalms chapter 83. Psalms chapter 83. Psalms 83, 
because everything is getting murky. And this is where the switch come in. And this is where we get totally lost. Mm -hmm. This is where the world get totally lost. Psalms 83, and we're going to start reading in verse 1. Psalms 83 and 1. All right, my brother, go ahead. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and, consult, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Look what they have did. These nations have taken crafty counsel against us, the people of the Most High God, and against his hidden ones, because we are in lowliness and obscurity, because we are taken out of our land, right? Go ahead on and read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's why we become black, African American, Negro, niggers, anything but Israel. Because they don't want the name of Israel to no more be remembered as a nation of people. Go ahead on and read. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. The tabernacle of Edom. That's Esau, ain't it? He is one of the ones who want the name of Israel to be no more in remembrance. Go ahead on and read. And the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites. Who is that? That's the Arabs, right? That's why they are still fighting to this day over a land that they know ain't theirs. We didn't conspire together to get these people cut off. Now that they cut off, Esau, you going to take it? No, I deserve just as much as you do. We're going to split this thing in half. But Esau want it all mm -hmm. because he our brother, right? And he have put his name off. He done made himself disappear from geography. So he got to have an identity, don't he? So what he do? He take our identity. It's really so he said, no, I can't give y'all nothing, Ishmael. You didn't help me. Now, like the joke in Batman, I'm getting ready to knock you off. But I guess Esau forgot what the Lord said about Ishmael. He said, this is a wild man. <laughs> You're going to have a hard time knocking him off. That's right. And he ain't knocked Ishmael off yet. <laughs> okay? So now, this is what happened in 70 A.D. Esau dropped his identity, took on our identity, because the Romans have cast us into the Western Hemisphere. And now the battle for our land goes on between Esau and Ishmael. Now the Lord got a warning for Esau because people forget that the Lord is still running this thing. Now Esau, you and all these other nations that inspired to do this to my people, I got a warning for you. Let's go into the book of Obadiah. Obadiah only have one chapter. So let's go and see what the Lord had to say to Obadiah. Once you get to Daniel, come back a little bit, and Obadiah is right there. Because <clears throat> the Lord got a message for you, Esau. You think that you're going to hide up under somebody else's name? The world might not know, but I know. Because you forget who you're messing with. You're messing with my son, even my firstborn. The one that I love so much, I got his name engraved in the palms of my hand. He is the apple of my eye. And if you touch him, you touch me. I got something for you, Esau. Obadiah, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Obadiah, verse 1. All right, my brother, go ahead. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador was sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Esau, I have made you small among the nations, and you are greatly despised in my eyes. Skip down to verse 10. And this is why you are greatly despised in my eyes. Verse 10, go ahead. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. You should be cut off forever. Forever. So whatever you got right now, you better enjoy it because you ain't got nothing coming tomorrow. The books say you're going to be cut off forever. Forever, ever? <laughs> forever. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead on and read. 
in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. And that day was 70 A.D. when Titus came in and destroyed Jerusalem. They were strangers came into our gate and carried away captive our forces. Esau, you was right there with them. Because Herod was an Edomite. And he was governor over Judea, and he was placed there by the Romans. He was a Roman vessel. Edom, you was as one of them. Go ahead on and read. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced of the over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of, of distress. Because my children rebelled against me. And I'm disciplining them. This is going to happen to them anyway. I didn't ask you to put your two cent in. That's just like you got a brother who done got in trouble and he getting a whooping. And you up there laughing because daddy or mama wearing him out. You ain't got no business laughing at your brother or your sister. Now when I get through with him, I'm going to come and get you. And this is what Edom did. He laughing at what's going on. And he want to put his hand in it. So now the Lord said, you shouldn't have did that. Go ahead on and read. 13. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yeah, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. What is our substance, our culture, our heritage, and our name? They took it in 70 A.D. That's how they disappeared from geography. When Rome was whooping us, they came in and took everything that we had. And the Lord said, you shouldn't have did this. Go ahead on and read. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Just like